<laughs> you know, hitting the ball out there a long way is not only fun, but we find out that it's also been uh, statistically undervalued for a long time. It's almost like we have to change that old adage, you know, drive for show, putt for dough. We have to change it to drive for dough, putt for dough. <laughs> I mean, just look at the PGA Tour this year I and mean, look at all the monster drivers, the big hitters that are just absolutely dominating tournaments. And to prove to you just how undervalued distance off the tee is, just look at the, you know, what a statistical guy, a scientific guy Bryson DeChambeau is. I mean, he calculated all of this and how many strokes he would gain, even if he's in the rough, by driving it a certain distance. So that's how he based his whole game, based his whole physique uh, over the winter, over just knocking out of the ball out there and by gosh it is working he is starting to dominate he's in the top 10 a lot um, he's put it together with a nice wedge game and putting but at the heart of it all is that smash off the tee and i bet like me it's having an awful lot of fun doing it too so i've stumbled across what i call a secret power formula that i'd like to share with you in this video well it sounds kind of gimmicky and clickbaity you're going to see that there's some really good meat and science behind it and i think it's going to help you be able to plan how you're going to get more club head speed power and distance off the tee as well so if you'd like to get a lot longer off the tee then stick around Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee. Longer and straighter all the way to the green because to me that's what makes golf fun. So if you agree, maybe you've lost some yardage off the tee and you'd, you'd like to see if you could find some of it back, well then I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button. Uh, like this video, click the like button at the end if you really liked it, and leave a comment down below. Farther. All right, well, let's talk about this secret power formula I've discovered. It sounds really gimmicky, I know, but you're going to see that it's very solid, rooted in science. And what it's based on is your potential to create speed and power from the position of your windup. So look at this for a second. Imagine that I can get the club here for a second. Think about how many circle feet, if we took like a if we took like a cloth measuring tape, like you might use for sewing, we could shape it in a circle. And let's say I could get the handle of the club here at the top of the swing. And now look at its journey is going to be a long way in, let's call it circle feet. So it has a lot of time to accelerate and reach a very high speed. Now think about it this way. We'll take a, the circle away. Let's just uh, do it like a straightaway. And we'll, we'll say we're, um, we're racing a car. So first imagine the, um, your favorite sports car that you would love to drag race in, you know, do like a street race. Uh, leave it in the comments down below. That'll be fun to see who likes uh, which sports cars. But would you rather do a street race that only went two blocks or wouldn't it be more fun to race three or four blocks? You can see how after three or four blocks, your speed will be significantly higher than you if you could only race two blocks and then you had to hit the brakes right after that. So if you could go a full half mile, boy, you could get that car up to its top speed probably or close. And it's the same idea with the handle of the club here. The greater potential we can create in getting this handle further away from where it's going to end up at impact the more potential we have to accelerate it. Now I have that broken down into four measurements, four pieces that you can improve on all individually. So let's cover them. All right, number one is degrees of shoulder turn. So I'll put up the, the swing that I made and uh, you know, I'm about between let's say 90 and 100 degrees of shoulder turn on a good swing. That's pretty good. I could probably improve on that if I really worked on that. Um, the second measurement is what hour on the clock does your left upper arm get to? So you can't count the forearm because look, if I bend my forearm like this, see my upper arm is at nine o'clock, 
my forearm is at 12. You're only counting the upper arm segment. What time is it on the clock from the camera's perspective? So somebody like a Jack Nicholas, he was pretty close to 11 o'clock. Then you get to the super long bombers like Dustin Johnson. He gets pretty close to 12 o'clock. And the ultimate long driver in the entire world right now is Kyle Berkshire. And he also gets his upper left arm all the way to 12 o'clock. It's a hell of a big windup. You got to have a lot of flexibility for that. The third measurement in my secret or formula that you can use to improve your speed and distance is how many inches the club shaft is at the top of the swing off of your rear shoulder. So if you were to only be here, well, that's only about a three inch gap between my shoulder and the club shaft. And we'll go back to that picture of, picture of Kyle Berkshire. I mean, he's jumps off the page. I'm gonna guess that that club is something like 16 or 17 inches. Um, space off the right shoulder. It really gets that handle further and further away. It's like taking your sports car, being able to back up an extra city block, and you get to get a rolling, running head start at the green light. It's going to give you a lot more speed at the finish line. My number four component of this secret power formula is the degrees of wrist cock. So this would be here, this would be a, about a 90 degree angle, and then I can go to 100 degrees and maybe even 110 if I really wanted to. Um, I go about 90 or maybe 95 or 100 pretty typically. Again, it's another area where if I needed more power, I would start ramping up a little bit more wrist top. Okay, so let me give you the formula, and it can consist of these four components I've just spelled off. Then we'll use a few examples, and that'll help familiarize you with exactly kind of how to formulate it so you can do it to yourself when you take a video from face on. So first of all, I like to give one point for every 10 degrees of shoulder turn. So in my case, my best swing is 100 degrees, that would give me 10 points. Okay, next is for every hour on the clock, you can wind your upper left arm around the clock, you get a point. So on my best swing, I'm at about 11 o'clock. Third, we'll add in uh, one point for every 10 degrees of wrist cock. So at a 90 degree wrist cock, that would give me nine points. And then fourthly, how many inches do I typically have the club off my shoulder at the top of the swing? Well, oh, let's give me, uh, say, 10 inches there. So we add them up. I have 10 plus 11, that's 21. Nine for the wrist cock, that's 30. And about nine for the shaft being nine inches off the shoulder. So that gives me a total score of 39. 39 would be my power potential, 39 points. And what I find interesting here is that, by gosh, if you multiply these by three, that would give me 39 times three, would give me 117. By gosh, that's right on what my top maximum speed is right now, about 117 miles an hour is about as fast as I can swing right now. So it's, it's, it's a really interesting formula. Let's apply it to some other golfers that both you know and you don't know, and let's see uh, if it matches with them as well. So let's start with a really interesting example of Tony Finau, because you know Tony, Tony Finau is one of those guys who, he's really known for making a very short backswing relative to PGA Tour standards. It looks like he's only going back Oh, about three quarters of the way. So I've put a still image overlapping the screen here and we're gonna add up his values for these four components. We'll see what his average score is. So T Tony Finau this year on the PGA Tour has been averaging about 121 and a half miles per hour. But he does have an all time top speed this year of 127 miles an hour. That was his fastest one swing for the whole year. So now if you add up these numbers, you can see despite the fact that he's a little bit short he's still up there with that power formula. You see, if you multiply it uh, by three, he's got a little bit lower score than me, which means potentially he must be doing something in the downswing to exceed 
his power potential that most people would have. So he must be really accelerating that club faster than the average person. Recently on Twitter, he posted a swing from kind of a casual round of golf with his buddies at home. And just for fun, they, they challenged him. Hey, can you make a full swing? So here's that full swing. It's unbelievable. And they had the, uh, the launch monitor on him. And he gets to drive amazingly up to 208 miles an hour of ball speed which means that the club had to have been moving at least 135 miles an hour let's apply my secret power formula numbers to his full swing and you can see that it absolutely makes sense to get 135 miles an hour he would have to wind up much bigger than that three quarters position all right let's look at the king of all long drivers now that's kyle berkshire you'll notice put his video up on the screen again this guy just jumps off the page absolutely oozing power he's a tall skinny guy you know he's not a big guy he's not like a big bench presser squatter lifter guy he's just kind of lanky and quick but look at the power potential he produces here so i'm going to put the power formula numbers on the screen here and you see how high he gets so he gets a score of 52 um, you know compared to my 39 he's at 52 and 52 times 3 is 156 and by god that is about his top swing speed it's around 156 miles per hour so 52 times 3 156 just shows you how much extraordinary power potential he has built in to his windup and how much travel the handle has to move to get from the top of his swing which is way up here like this and you can see how many extra feet he has to accelerate the club all right so enough of the elite golfers maybe some of you out there just aren't relating to people that swing this fast so i'm going to use the video of a sw of some swings i took of a student of mine who i met with last week his name is paul paul came to me because he's really got some power and distance issues so uh, Paul's initial swings were about 80 miles per hour and I will put up a um, one of his first attempts he's about 80 miles an hour average but after working on the um, some of these exercises to increase uh, his number his power formula number uh, well he was able to leave very happy because he had uh, eclipsed 90 miles an hour several occasions uh, during a swing at a ball so it was wonderful he was really knocking it out there farther he was very happy and picking up 10 miles an hour is no joke in such a small period of time all right hey so what is your favorite car number one i'd love to leave you to leave me a comment below but video yourself stop it at the top of the swing and start to add up these component parts be honest number one what's the degrees on your shoulder turn number two on the clock where does your upper left arm get to number three how many inches off of your rear shoulder is the club shaft and number four what is your wrist cock angle these are the areas where you can add in a lot more potential and I'm going to be helping you work on some of these ideas in videos to come. So I hope you'll stay tuned to my channel because I'd love to see you and really be able to knock it out there longer this year. So hey, I'd really love to be able to bump my uh, super top high speed up to, let's say, 120 or even 123. So if I can figure out where I'm going to get one or two more points, that'll be like three to six more miles per hour that I'll be able to squeak out. So I'm going to go back to this, keep practicing getting that wind up into bigger greater power potential but hey i hope i see you in the next video and if not i hope i see you longer and straighter down the fairway take care